All right, so we are live. Welcome back everybody to my YouTube channel. I am Keelan and this is the Indieverse. Today we have Susan Fa on the show. And Susan, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. I realize I didn't even ask, so please correct me. <laughs> um, but I'll turn it over to Susan to introduce herself and then we are going to get into it. I think we have a whole bunch of exciting topics to explore today, including launching an indie bookstore. And I'm super excited to hear about that. So Susan, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Helen. Um, so my name is Susan Faw, the Do Re Mi Fa. It's easy to remember. Um, I am an indie author who uh, resides in Northern Ontario. Um, I've been lived up here for about two years now, originally from you know more the GTA area of Canada, which is uh, Southern Ontario. Um, I am a fantasy author. That is what my primary love is, and I come by that honestly. It's been my main reading source for many, many years, probably starting back. Oh, you know, the, the old argument, you know, is uh, Star Wars actually fantasy or is it science fiction? Well, I was always on the fantasy side of that. <laughs> um, always loving the magic. And yeah, that's where my heart is. So that's that's what I write. Uh, yeah, it doesn't fantasy. I'm also a fantasy author. And doesn't it just like, I don't know, it just sweeps you up. And maybe it's just a little bit because my heart loves the escapism. But like, it's so it's so nice. Also, um, Susan, you're a fellow Canadian, so that's really exciting. Yes, you're a fellow Canadian. I was once on, I was once having a live stream on YouTube, and a lot of the time, um, there's people from all over the world, but I guess my audience is primarily from the States, but there was this one time that every single person was from Canada or South Africa, and I was like, wow, this never happens. That's so interesting. Um, yeah, so Susan, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. And to everybody who is here in the chat, thank you for coming to chat with us today. If you have any questions while we're talking, please just let us know in the chat. And then at the end of the interview, we'll pop it up on screen and make sure that we get your questions answered. So thank you so much for coming. Um, but Susan, I just wanted to start off with like you telling us a bit about yourself and your writing and your writing journey. So like, how did you start and how did you get to where you are now? I originally started writing um, back in 2016. Um, the impetus on all of that actually was that I have, um, had a, a corporate merger that was happening in my day job. <clears throat> and uh, uh, corporate mergers, once you've worked for in a long career, um, can be very discouraging. <laughs> Generally, <laughs> when a merger happens, it's the more senior, the more expensive employees that, that find the door eventually. And uh, I just had this feeling that it wasn't going to be long before I would probably uh, not have this job that I had been in for so very long. So um, I remember getting the news corporately and, uh, you know, going to the fridge, grabbing a bottle of wine, heading out to the deck with my glass and, you know, polishing off the bottle and then sitting back going, well, you decided you always wanted to write and I think this is the time to do it because you know it's plan B time <laughs> and uh, that was the push you know it's a funny push but when you're looking at um, you know what are you gonna do at you know 45 or 50 how, how are you gonna change your life um, a job loss will certainly do that so I, I did I went back inside and I started writing my first novel which was entitled Seer of Souls um, it's a mythology uh, fantasy that uh, deals with a, um, a pair of twins who are um, murdered at birth, basically, and their souls transported to another set of twins being born in, a, in another part of the country to uh, save them from the evil that's trying to destroy them. And uh, their journey of discovery as they grow up and, and find out what their true purpose is and, and what they're, they were born to do. So uh, yeah, that was my, my first venture into the world of, of, of being an author. Um, that book was published in 2016 and about three months after I had uh, published it with a small press, um, they closed their doors. So I found myself back out <laughs> trying to figure out how to publish this book in, in the indie sphere. And uh, that's really when I, I dug into to the indie world and, and really figured out what, what it was all about. So uh, I went on to finish that book, um, another book and a third book, and uh, it's won awards. So those are <laughs> those are the uh, the things that bring about, I think, an author's journey. Everybody has a different impetus, but uh, yeah, for me, that's that's how I get started. 
that's it, it's just amazing to hear um different people's journeys and how they got started and i have like maybe it's a little bit of a technical question but um we chatted beforehand about like you know when the press closed their doors the rights were released back to you but did you have to go about republishing the book like did you have to go through the whole indie process of getting a new cover and all of those things or no. did work yeah well, in, my, in my case they actually gave us everything including the cover that nice. we had designed while we were in in there so i had the whole shebang i had all of the you know the parts of the book but um you know how how to put that up through you know kdp and you know, how to put the print copies up and, and how to get all that coordinated uh, that was the challenge figuring out how it all all the, all the different parts come together to actually create a, a print on demand book so isn't it so kdp yeah. and ingram spark and all that is like not easy <laughs> it's no really not. no a lot of a lot of moving parts to these things and yeah uh, but you know, once you've done it a few times, you, you get it figured out, and you know, you get better at it and quicker at it. <laughs> but you know, when when you start an indie journey, uh, any author like this, um, yeah, you're you're basically becoming your own publishing house. So you have to learn it, and you know, there's great groups on Facebook that can help you take it from A to Z. And that's really how I learned. I I got in the groups and you know, talked to people and watched for posts, and yeah, it's. You know, there's people out there that can help and it's good that those communities exist. Oh yeah, writing groups and like Facebook writing groups are completely a godsend. Like, they're so, so amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm curious to know then, like you started writing, you said after, you know, the company was going through a merger, did you ever dabble in writing before that or was it mostly reading? Like, was there something kind of before you went down the professional route of writing? No, I, I actually never ever really wrote other than in high school um, and okay. in college, of course. But uh, when I actually had had the book written and, and I actually broke the news to my to my folks that, hey, guess what? I finally sat down and wrote a book. My mom turns to me and she says, well, it's about time. <laughs> so apparently they knew that this was something I was supposed to be doing, but it took me forever to figure it out. So I, I thought that was an interesting comment because she says, yeah, you were always in the books and you were always writing or scribbling something. And, you know, parents it, it just wasn't. Know they. they just yeah, know. Yeah, they, they, they do know. Right? It's interesting. My dad even said, you know what, I'm going to read this since you, you wrote it. So he borrows a copy of it and he takes it home. And a few days later, he comes back and he says, it's not really for me, but good on you. you know? <laughs> not a fantasy fan, but <laughs> that's so good. Try. My so. dad too read my book, and as a fantasy author, he's not a fantasy reader. But yeah. I was like, love you, dad. Thanks, dad. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I guess so. Then, why fantasy? What was it that drew you to this genre in particular? In particular. Um, fantasy and, and young adult, um, mm -hmm. that's always been my love. I, I just adore the hero's journey. I like to see yeah. the, the character arc from, you know, backwards, I wouldn't necessarily say innocent, but you know, the, I love the, maybe it comes to being a parent too, you know, watching your children grow and seeing them mature and seeing how, you know, something they didn't understand when they were 10 and how they, they come to grasp that concept when they're 20. Um, mm -hmm. You know, everybody's first heartbreak and, <laughs> you know, the, the, the growth of and maturing of a person uh, and how life's experiences will shape them, I find to be very fascinating. And, and, I, and I like exploring yes. that in my books. So very, very large part of what I do. Um, that's probably a, a generational thing too, where you know, my kids be more raised on, you know, gaming and things along that line, which, you know, I dabble in, but don't, you know, really do a whole lot of. Um, I, I find a lot of RPG novels coming out that, you know, I kind of look at and go, just not the depth of character that I strive mm -hmm. to put into my novels. You know, I want, I want you to feel when you pick up one of my books that you're walking alongside that person and, and you really can get into them. And, um, 
but I found uh, the Harry Potter books to be very much that kind of an experience. And yeah, yeah, I just I just like that that arc and that, that hero's journey. I, I love that explanation and I feel like YA in particular, like young adult is very unique because you get that it, it's a it's a part of life where you're developing so much. So you get to see that character development and it's just yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah. 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 Um so tell us about what you're writing now. Which what do you have going on right now? <laughs> Writing well, and going on releasing <laughs> soon. What you? What are you up to? What are you up to? <laughs> um, I have several on the go. Um, I never lack for ideas when it comes to writing. It's I always have another story that's that's you know kicking me in the pants to to get. You writing. went from like you went from like zero to prolific writer. Uh, real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I I you know I, I some people say hey you know what you know I have a very active imagination so. If I'm thinking about something, I probably dream it that night. Um, it's one of the reasons I don't watch horror before going to bed, because I will have to yep. I will have to invent another ten endings for it, and it's just not conducive to sleep, right? So if I watch horror, <laughs> I have to watch a Hatter show after. It's like my yep. like, rule. I have to, I'm like, I have to rewrite the horror endings, movie. Right? And I yeah, yeah. I have to find a different way to torture the person. So yeah, I, I have to be careful on what I when I consume visually before I go to bed because I will dream it. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, where I'm at right now with my writing, um, I just signed with Fall Brandt Press, which is a new uh, publisher that's that's come out recently. That's all fantasy. Um, and they're taking over my Dragon series. So um, there's four books published there. So I'm working on the fifth one, which is Heart of Fjord. Um, it's dragons and genies and uh, triad mind merging <laughs> with shapeshifters. <laughs> um, had me as dragons. I it's a fun, love it's a fun series. <laughs> yeah, but they can all read each other's mind, basically, right? And they, they communicate, you know, a lot in their, their headspace, but uh, it's a lot of fun to write. Uh, so I'm working on that series, which is will be 12 books when that that one's done. That's a lot. Um, it's a lot, <laughs> but there's a plan. There's an evil plan, but there's a plan. Uh, we love an evil plan. An evil plan is great. <laughs> I always got to be a villain, right? Someone to yeah. love to hate. Yeah. Uh, and then another thing that I'm dabbling with that uh, I, I have been working on for a while is um, a gaslight fantasy series, uh, which is about a young man who discovers that his uh, grandparents have the ability to um, uh, basically capture the souls of uh, evil people within their portraits. Uh, so the, the series is called The Guardians of Le Jardinet. And basically the family's uh, magical trait is that they imprison uh, people who are going off the rails in their portraits because every megalomaniac always has his portrait done at some point in time. So <laughs> this so, is true. <laughs> yeah, it's very true, right? There's always, you always see that portrait. So um, the story basically starts out with his uh, mother being murdered uh, when she is uh, asked to uh, touch up a painting that has been discovered in an attic buried for a long time and uh, the she makes a mistake and the um, figure in the painting um, uh, kills her with her own scalpel that she's using to clean the portrait and uh, he doesn't know anything about this <laughs> of course and uh, figures out that it's actually the painting that has murdered his mother but meanwhile his prints are all over the studio so he knows if the cops show up, they're going to blame him for the murder. Because <laughs> he's touched okay. everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so he ends up um, setting fire to, the, to the, uh, his mother's studio. He packs all the paintings into a Winnebago and he takes off to see the only person he's never met before, which is grandmother, who's estranged from his mother. And he, he goes back to find out the family history. And so, so starts the series. So uh, his, uh, his goal in this is to go back and uh, recapture this escaped person from his portrait. And the person that was in that portrait is Napoleon. So he's going okay. back to <laughs> He has to step through a portal and away he goes, right? Capture Napoleon, put him back in his portrait. So that'll be a 
you know, series that can go on for as many as they as they want to have it go on for, right? So that sounds yeah. like such an interesting idea. Yeah, and like different portraits, like ooh, oh, that's such a great. Just think idea. of the loop and you can think of how many paintings there are. I can go any place in history you want to go. Yeah, no, for sure. Ooh, that sounds like a really cool project. Yeah, so that's that's where that series will go. I've got three covers designed at this point with my artist, and uh, yeah, that's going to be one of the other books I'm working on. First one is called Framed. <laughs> I like it. It's good. <laughs> I love it. I'm like such a sucker for titles. Oh, what was I going to I was going to ask, because you said you already have three color covers. So, I mean, this yes. is a little bit of a side note question. Are you, I feel like there's two kind of groups of people, people who get their covers before finishing the book and people who get their covers after finishing the book. And then I'm sure there's people in between, but what do yeah. you fall into? <laughs> um, this particular series, I had the first three done, uh, only because okay. the um, cover designer is so hard to book. She's uh, yeah. years in advance, so if you if you if you're getting one of those people who are really in demand, you have to kind of book mm -hmm. out. <laughs> you know, so I prefer though really to book a cover when I'm at least halfway through, because it gives me more ideas on on what that cover should look like. For so sure. Tend to go that route. Oh, such a cool idea. Oh man, yeah, and you're doing so many things. I know we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but you, you're you in the process of launching a brick and mortar indie bookstore. Um, Sounds strange with COVID, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> but like, I, I guess I'm curious, and I know we were talking about it a little bit, but I'm like so curious, like what part of the process are you at? And actually let's start, like how, how did you come up with wanting to do that in particular? I, I've always wanted, probably before even I wanted to write, I wanted to have a bookstore. It's always something, right. I, you know, I, I'm, the, I'm the nerd kid that hung out in the library when everybody else went to the football game or the, the hockey game, right? Um, mm -hmm. That was never me. I was always stuck in a book, back in the corner reading. That's just always who I was. And I couldn't, I can't imagine any better <laughs> fit for me than a bookstore. And I think that the, um, the indie uh, experience has really opened my eyes to what else a bookstore can be, which I don't think I would have even realized, you know, before I started on this journey. But mm -hmm. uh, indies are smart and they're savvy and they're, they're fast writers and they've learned how to put out a professional product that um, resonates with the audience because they are following the trends and, and they're, they're seeing what everybody else is seeing. They're seeing what uh, people are binging on on Netflix and they're, you know, they're, they're looking at what is popular in gaming and, and all these different things. And so they come up with unique books that they can put together and get to market um, at the same time as the people are actually interested in it, which is hard for a traditional publisher. And because they have to book these things out so far in advance, you know, it can be years to get a book to market. And totally. because indies can do that, um, it makes for a very unique um, scenario when it comes to paper. Um, so my concept on, on this uh, bookstore launch is to really do a, a boutique type of offering. Um, I do not want to go head to head with Amazon. You know, I don't mm -hmm. want to to even begin to put the same product out that they would they would be offering. So my thought is to do uh, signed paperbacks, almost nice. exclusively signed paperbacks uh, okay. and hardcovers. So so when that offering is there, that that author is going to be standing there with you know behind that product, and it allows for a more premium spend too because it is mm -hmm. a, you know a signed product. It's unique. Um, we can serialize it in some way. Uh, we, and, you know, my other concept with it all is is to basically pair it with a, a chocolate. <laughs> oh, so so it's going to be a, a book and chocolate boutique is what is what this bookstore is going to be. And it's going to be very niche, you know, um, yeah. not it's just not going to be even the indie bookstore down the road because they're going to all have traditional authors. This this will not. This is going to be purely 
uh, indie and small press. Right. So it's like an indie bookstore that only sells indie books. Because you're right. right. Sometimes you walk into an indie bookstore and it is all traditionally published. Books. That's like, right. This and is it's, the all, it's only the independent term on, on most bookstores only means that they're not part of someone else's corporate. Yeah, they're and not. I, part I, of indie that's go not what I mean by indie. By indie, I mean, you know, the self-published author. And, and yeah. that's that's really what I want to feature. So. There are great books out there. there there's award-winning books out there. There's New York Times bestseller books out there. Um, you know, there's there's indies making seven figures from their basement, and yes. they can't get on a shelf. And you know, maybe you know, if you're seven figures in your basement, you don't want to be on a shelf anymore. It doesn't matter to you. But um, I think there's there's room for a whole lot of people that 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 is important to. And and by you know, fear, featuring um, featuring this this fear. Um, you also avoid the issues of, you know, a huge backlog of, of volume. Mm -hmm. um, you're, not, you're not faced with, you know, I have to return these books in six months because they're outdated. Um, they're not selling, whatever. You're, 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 it's going to be a very quick turnover, fast paced, pivoting style uh, of bookstore. You know, if you come in this month, you're not going to see the same books next month. Right. You know? Right. And, and with obviously a very heavy online presence to all of this, too. For sure. Um, I love the idea of them all being signed. Like that is yeah. just so, oh, that is just so unique because you know whatever you're getting in that store has been touched by the author, which is mm -hmm. really something special, yeah. I think. And I'm hoping to also bring in a, a live feed into the store, too. So when you if you actually make it to the brick and mortar store to just drop in and say hello, um, you know, there will be an author there featuring their book when you walk cool. in the door. And if yeah. I can make that interactive, all the better. You know, I'd love to see someone walk in the store, walk up, pick up your book, start talking to you, you know, uh, you know that type of thing. And, you know, this is, I, I want to make it a, a very personal experience and a very premium experience, right? So that it makes sense for all of us in the end. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of my concept. That so, sounds so so much fun so like what part of the process are you at right now because i know covid must have thrown a wrench in things just like it it threw a wrench yeah. in many i don't know about you but um total side note but kdp apparently wasn't delivering proofs to canada so <laughs> amazon um, doesn't do a lot of things to canada <laughs> yeah i know but uh so so with the whole uh yeah it's true um but with the whole you know covid wrench that has been thrown in everything um you know, what part of the process are you at in terms of kicking this off, getting it launched, et cetera? Yeah. So I, I'm working with a couple of government agencies that have mm -hmm. a, um, incentives for, for Northern Ontario, which is handy because, you know, they, they want to bring more business to, to the north. So those are those are kind of cool programs. Um, but probably the biggest component that's that's really going to make this happen is, is the Kickstarter I have coming up. Um, date is not set yet but um, sometime in either august or you know uh, early september is when this should finally launch um yeah and i, I put out a call to some of the indies that i know and, and a couple of groups that i know and there's been a, an amazing response of indies that want to be involved and in offering up their their signed books and, and yeah they're they're onboarding really quick so <laughs> Yeah, so I, I won't run out of, uh, you know, offerings, that's for sure. I haven't quite uh, got my head wrapped around how I'm going to kind of um, scale all of this within the Kickstarter. I don't necessarily want to have pages and pages, but um, I, I think there's going to be this something there for everybody. And, and that's mm -hmm. the cool thing about it. You know, how often do you get a Kickstarter where it's like, you know, take your pick of signed authors uh, <laughs> oh, that's right so in your cool. home. So. Anybody, I guess yeah. anybody in the chat uh, who has a book, who wants to be part of this bookstore, contact Susan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that's so amazing. Yeah, I think that's such a cool offering to offer to the folks at Kickstarter. And yeah, that's amazing that um, you can work with the government agencies to to get this going because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's just great uh, that that's available. Um, so it has, I mean, have you seen things halt uh, with COVID a little bit or are you still like trudging along? <laughs> yeah, I, I took a, a little bit of a break just to see, you know, what this was all going to mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but what it reinforced to me was that I'm on the right path. You know, there, there's a lot of those big stores that are hurting so badly. I, I think on the news on, on the American side, um, Neiman Marcus was filing for bankruptcy, Lord and Taylor. I mean, uh, you'd have to wonder about Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some of these big realtor up here, you know, chapters, when, when you're reliant upon that foot traffic to walk into your store, and you have huge inventories and huge, um, you know, costs as far as you know your rent and that type of thing. Just mm -hmm. keeping the lights on is a is a massive undertaking, and uh, I don't really want to go that route, you know. And then that's partly yeah. what Kickstarter is all about. Is up here, real estate's still um, pretty affordable uh, if you can find a building, which is partly why we're timing it where we are. Um, but uh, the Kickstarter. It, definitely is about trying to buy that building outright if at all possible to avoid you know some of that mm -hmm. kind of issue and then just get off on a good foot and you know with i think with uh, a lot of smart savvy people around you know lending me a hand we'll we'll get there <laughs> it's uh if you build it they'll come you know it, but you know a lot of the traffic for this store is also going to be online traffic and you know you've sure. got to be very very cognizant of that that's you know partly what's going to happen here is you know, just to move things through that way. Yeah. So, so how do you balance all of this with writing? There's um, like, it's a lot. <laughs> You're doing a lot. <laughs> um, I get up really early. Uh, I was I about to say, do you not sleep? Yeah. Like? <laughs> I get up really early and I write. And I also work full time still. Yeah. So, there goes the cell phone. Ah. It's uh, always something. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm up early to write and then... Um, you know, I, I write late in the night <laughs> if I can stay awake. I work full time still too. So, and then trying to, to work the bookstores. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just you know weekends are full. I, I don't really have a day off at this point. <laughs> yeah, I can, and I and I mean also like in addition to all of that, I noticed on your website, and maybe this was pre-COVID. I mean, I, obviously, I'm assuming this was pre-COVID, but it seems like you've done like some touring around for writing events and all of that um that i guess is just another thing that you're adding to your roster there yeah yeah i, I find uh, live appearances um really important for an author uh being mm -hmm. able to just talk to that person walking by engaging their interest um it's really fun to actually talk to them and just see you know if you get that pitch down what what they feel about that series and sometimes you can you see their eyes like they don't get it <laughs> like okay i gotta work on that pitch a little more and other <laughs> times they just like their jaw drops going oh that's really cool <laughs> that's really yeah. interesting you know so yeah i, I find that uh, live events are, are very exhausting but they're very good for um you know just meeting the people who would normally read your books and see yeah what, what they think about things yeah. And what do you use to keep track of, like, would, do you just use a calendar? Like, I'm assuming you just don't sleep because this is so much stuff that you have going on. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you pivot from one to another, right? So mm -hmm. some things just take longer. Yeah. yeah, just keep going. I like to write. So, I mean, it's, you know, if you're not writing, sometimes it just feels like you're not going anywhere. So it's my, it's my vacation, it's my time off. <laughs> I agree with that a hundred percent. Writing is such a wonderful escape. Um, mm -hmm. We're closing in on a half hour here and I see some questions popping up in the chat. Everybody, if you have any questions for Susan, please let us know in the chat because I'm gonna ask Susan one last question and then we're going to get to yours. So make sure you get it in there. Um, but Susan, it's been such a pleasure learning about you know your experience and learning about the bookstore that's going to be launched and i wish you all the luck with that because i know covid probably threw a giant wrench in your plans um but i guess the last question that i have for you is what would be your advice or do you have any advice for new and aspiring authors um like myself i just have one book coming up on two out uh, coming out there. So I don't know, what would your advice be to somebody who's just kind of starting off in the industry? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is it more of, you know, what did I wish I knew that yeah. I know now that I've never knew that I didn't know then? Whatever, answer it however yeah. you want. <laughs> yeah, um, you gotta write what you love. 
you know, mm -hmm. you, you can you can chase a particular kind of style, you know, because it's selling well. But if it's not you, it's just not going to come out right. You know, there's an audience for what you write out there if you write it well. And, you know, just write what you love to write. And, you know, that's that's really the best story that you can tell. And if you try and, you know, tell someone else's story, it's just going to fall yeah. flat. So, yeah, that's write what you love and, and do it well. And they'll come. <laughs> I love what you said just there about um, there's an audience out there for what you write as long as you write it well like i think that yeah or like as if you write it well and write what you love like those two sentiments like if you want to read it chances are there's somebody out there yeah. out there who wants to there's read someone it. like you out there right and then just make sure beyond that that you're putting out the most professional product you can afford don't skimp on your cover make sure it doesn't mean it has to be expensive but it has to be professional and mm -hmm. you know I can spot an unprofessional cover from a mile away and it yeah. just gives that first bad impression. And, you know, it, you see it in the, in the live events, right? If you have a, a table full of books there and, um, you know, the covers are not appealing, it, it doesn't catch their eye. And, and if there's crowds of, you know, glitter and bang going on, um, they're just going to walk right on by. They don't care. Mm -hmm. So you have one chance to hook them and that is that cover. And if they catches their eye, they'll pause. And that's your chance to say, hi, <laughs> come talk to me about my book. Um, which they wouldn't have even looked at if it wasn't appealing. So, you know, don't scrimp on those things. Make sure that, you know, that book is on point and as far as the cover and that, cause that's your first sales card. And, you know, make sure the interior is just as great. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, Special and I've just, I'm just seeing in the comments right now, Eva, uh, Eva is here and she's agreeing with you. If you don't have the money, take the time and agrees completely with uh, what you're saying about the cover. So I think we're going to jump into some audience questions, but thank you so much for those pieces of advice. I think that's something that, you know, with all of the like writing to market and all of these different things you hear, that's something that you need to, like, I personally like to be reminded of, like, write what you love and, you know, that doesn't mean like there are things that are marketable and if there is something like that that you love you can go ahead and, and do that but i completely agree and sometimes i need to be reminded of that well, right that, that's how subgenres are created because somebody decides to write what they love and someone goes that's so freaking cool i gotta i gotta read that right yeah um, you know that, that's that's where urban fantasy came from so yeah just go that route and find that niche and maybe end up being the trendsetter that, you know, pops open a whole new world. So it's totally you know, right what you love. Yeah. Um, so the first question from the audience comes from Dania and Dania is asking, how long does it take you to have a finished first draft? Ha, huh, depends on the book. <laughs> <laughs> it depends What's on your how well I plan it. Um, if I have the basic outline, I don't tend to go really in depth into my um, outlines because I like to discover as I go along, I wanna take the journey along with the character, but I will put together basically a chapter heading, you know, two or three quick points of what I think is gonna happen in that chapter. And then I, and then I write it. So it, it might not even be full sentences. It may be A meets B and fall down cliff. You know, something as simple as that, but it's, starts the journey and then I might just throw in a monkey wrench you know at the bottom we find a pot of gold I don't know what the pot of gold is I'll figure it out when I get there but you know mm -hmm. <laughs> you know something along that line that's just you know little prompts that um, once you get to that chapter just makes that that chapter go quick and if and if I have that vision of what's about to happen in that chapter I, I can write you know that 3,000 word chapter in probably about an hour and a half but it doesn't yeah, I'm so, I mean, I, I'm so But if I don't, if I don't have that there, then I will labor for hours trying yeah. to figure out what that chapter is going to be, and that that tends to be what delays it. But this is mm. kind of long-winded uh, version of a short draft. But <laughs> um, but honestly, a book for me is probably two months. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really month. good. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Two months for a first draft. I mean, I wish I could turn them out that fast. One day. I'm getting faster. I am getting faster. 
Um, all right, the next question from the audience is from ADHD writer. Where do you see the future of paperback and publishing going? Is it a service like Audible? Is a service like Audible more viable now after COVID? So like audiobooks? Yeah, so there's a few questions in there. Um, future of paperback. Paperback's never gonna go away. There's just people that like to read paperback. <laughs> screens are tiring to the eyes, especially as you get older and the younger set, you'll figure it out when you get there. Uh, <laughs> you know, you wanna get away from that screen, um, you know, after a while. So I, I don't think publishing uh, in paper is really gonna go away. Um, I think how that paper gets to the final end user is really what's going to change. And Amazon's already, you know, pushed a lot of those retailers to the brink just, just in, you know, being a giant Walmart online, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it. They don't do anything. Amazon's not a store. Amazon is an AI. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's, not, it's not a store. It's just a, a search engine. In the, at the end of the day, that's all it is. Um, so, you know, that is that is that the experience that everybody wants to have? No, uh, you know, it is. Does it fulfill a purpose? Absolutely. You know, it, you can get your book quick and cheap, and find it in multiple different formats. You know, um, it's the it's a one stop shop. Um, you know, so I, I think that the big retailers have to really figure out how they present the traditional. Um, and I, and I think they're gonna find that the massive bookstore just isn't how it's gonna go in the future. Um, yeah. They've got a lot of lot of big questions there that they gotta answer if they're ever gonna survive. So, yeah. You know, small and <laughs> so nimble. Industries, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, when you, when you have to remand or, you know, hundreds of thousands of books out the back door because you had to order, you know, tens of, thousands or tens of millions up front knowing that you're never ever going to sell them and that and that's the part that boggles the mind you know these best sellers in order to stop all these stores they have to put these orders out so far in advance and they don't know if they're going to sell and you know maybe you get a harry potter and maybe you don't and there's a whole if you go you can find used bookstores or remandered bookstores all over the us and canada and they're it's all true. traditionally published books that had their six months of shelf life and got returned. And that hurts the author, it hurts the industry. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't think that's a model that works anymore, honestly. And neither does Starbucks mm -hmm. in a bookstore. Like, what the heck? You know, let's dog ear and <laughs> all the merchandise and then send it back. You know, it's, it's just a model, it doesn't work. And uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're gonna feel it, especially with COVID now. Yeah. Um, Audible, Audible, I can see taking off gangbusters. Um, actually, the next evolution of um, ebook will be um, ebook and voice, and ebook and visual. Uh, so the next, what's coming up the pipes as far as the, that part is, uh, you know, with um, the Kobo and a lot of those e-readers is a another sensory um, portion. So they're going to combine where you can sit and read and have it also spoken to you at the same time. So if you fall asleep, it's still <laughs> in the story. I don't know that's happening. I'm so excited. Yeah, that's an EPUB 4. And that's uh, that's what they're all working on in the background right now. So that's the next evolution of, of eBooks. So yeah, oh. these things are always changing. There's always something new. <laughs> And right behind I, that is is also um, uh, there's a Canadian startup called Bookchain. You can Google it. And what that is is um, books published in blockchain. And this, oh, uh, whoa, yes. Okay. So this this is probably um, a few years out yet as far as it really coming on mainstream. Um, I do know the, the owners there. They're in Montreal. And oh, uh, <laughs> you, can, you can pop over and see them. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've been talking with uh, a lot of the traditional publishers out there, and uh, as, as you know, you know, coming on board and beginning to do um, ebooks in blockchain. Uh, for one of the main reasons being that it will stop piracy. Dead in its I was going to say because it's locked down in, in the blockchain. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're talking and 
you know, developing all of this, but uh, that's also something that's coming down. That's that's going to be some big changes going forward. So uh, on my bookstore, <laughs> that's probably the route I'm going. <laughs> As somebody who found my book on like a pirated website, this is just like music to my ears. That is yes. so cool. Yes, yes. So that is going to change things tremendously. As so. the EPUB with the audio and reading. I mean, like, I feel like, why wasn't this something that was done sooner? Because it seems like such a, like- It's been done for kids for years. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. For years. Like that for adults, so yeah. the technology that's out there, so. Yeah, because sure. for me, audiobooks, like I really enjoy audiobooks. Um, like I'm all the King's Traitors, my novel is being converted to an audiobook. But for me personally, and I'm not sure if this is the case for you, but I, I slip my attention slips faster when listening to an audiobook. So being able to like read and have the audio at the same time just sounds like the most pleasurable reading experience, and I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so that's um, that's not far off. It's very actually very close. So exciting. I had no idea that was in the works. Um, so exciting. Uh, I'm just gonna give one last call out for any questions. We've got one last question. So if anybody has questions, this is the opportunity to ask them. Ask them now because by the time we get done answering the next questions, if there are no more, we are going to sign off. Um, but the next question comes from Eva and Eva it asks, I think owning a bookstore as a writer is one of those fantasy concepts. What is one of your goals that you still consider a dream at this stage? So you've kind of like hit the, like you're opening a bookstore, you've hit that like writer reader dream. What's your, what's your dream that you still consider like it's out there? I would love to have a book hit New York Times bestseller list. I really would. And not necessarily because, you know, it was part of a, a run with a bunch of authors. I, I would like to just see it happen on its own merit. You know, I like, yeah. I, I, and um, unfortunately, that's nearly impossible for a, an indie. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you saw any of the, the controversy around uh, um, a particular author's uh, money spend <laughs> to, to get, uh, onto that list and climb the ranks, but you you have yep. to you have to do some serious uh, money spend to to be able to put those books up there, and uh, sometimes that involves um, some creative ways of <laughs> getting those sales. Um, but you know, I would I would you know I would dearly love to have something like that happen. I would that would be a dream come true. Um, For sure. So we'll just keep writing and we'll just we'll just keep seeing what happens. You know, uh, okay. Your name's gonna be up there like next release. Your name's gonna be up there and we <laughs> can't say that we were here for yeah. to hear the dream. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and the New York Times is finicky though, because you can like buy a whole bunch of stock and kind of like buy your way onto the list, but there's also like it is also a curated list. So even if you make the number of sales, if they don't like your book for some reason they can they have in the past just been like no not gonna yeah happen. and and you know a lot of what happens in those lists is the traditional publishers will go to the new york times and say no indie books and yeah. they just chop them right off the list even if they have the sales they don't have the opportunity because they'll just make sure that you know it's only yeah. traditional books that get recognized so um i yeah. say we must we need to go to um Seattle Times and say we're going to create a list. Yeah. <laughs> create another list. Here, yeah. here is the indie, you know, <laughs> the yeah. indie top list. No, so but it's I, I think there's room for an indie list out there. There definitely is. So yeah, yeah. No, totally. I think like one that's very indie, indie friendly seems to be USA Today, but then that's only US sales. So I don't know. But um, yeah, yeah. And we're both in Canada for anybody watching, but. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the New York Times list. Um, I heard the category that is most indie friendly on the New York Times list is romance. So, yeah, I I, I have heard that like they still do that in genres like fantasy where they're like, this is going to be like traditional. And yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hard, hard to do. You know, it's one of those dreams. Um, but who knows? Someday. Hey. 
you're opening a bookstore so like i <laughs> think the new york times is I, totally achievable <laughs> maybe i can help those books get there right <laughs> yeah yeah oh that's so exciting um eva also says in response to the answer to your question yes let's make a new list <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um, fine all right, so I think we've got into all of the audience questions. Uh, I want to thank everybody in the audience for coming and asking these amazing questions. And Susan, thank you so much for joining us on the Indieverse today. Do you have anything you want to say before we wrap up? And just so everybody knows, you can find Susan's information down in the description box below to check out all her books and website and stuff like that. Um, pretty much the only thing I would say at this point is watch for the Kickstarter. Uh, it's going to be a fun event. We're going to have a, a ton of authors there that are signing their books and shipping directly to you. So there's going to be hard covers and special editions and paperbacks and all kinds of bonus materials. And uh, they're all pumped to, you know, be, be involved in this. And uh, I, I can't think of any better way to do a Kickstarter than to feature the people that we would feature in the store. And, and it's the whole purpose for it. So, yeah, you there. <laughs> That's awesome. And I will, whenever you have the like finalized dates and times, send it my way and I'll make sure to get it out there to everybody who is here today. Sounds great. The new company, by the way, is called Dragon's Lair Artist Emporium. I love it. So good. I'm going to rate that. Yeah, Dragon's Dragon. Lair Artist Emporium. Yeah. Awesome. Dragon's Lair Artist Emporium. Is it, is there a website right now? It's under construction. Yeah. It's under construction. It'd be Dragon's Lair Artists. I am just going to, oh, is there a Facebook group? Is this a Facebook group for it? There's a, there's a Facebook group. Yeah. The store. Website is under construction. I'm just going to share it in the chat right now. So everybody who's interested in this indie bookstore, um, I think this is the right one. I apologize, I'm doing this. Team members, Susan, there you are. I'm going to copy this right into the chat here. And, and everybody is saying thank you, um, Susan, for coming on. So thank you so much, it is so appreciated. Eva wants a follow up on ribbon cutting day. And yeah. yes, this is just amazing. So thank you so much. The link to the Facebook page is in the chat. and. Susan, again, thank you. Everybody who came here today, thank you. And we'll talk later. Bye. Bye.